Drawing yourself as a Disney character is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey wonderful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. Now just a quick note before we start, you can follow this video along using whatever drawing tools you have, so either Procreate like me on the iPad Pro or a different software or even pencil and paper would work. This video is really about the proportions for Disney characters more than, you know, the specific software. Now we're going to start by just making sure we have a picture of ourselves that we can use as a reference. So whether you have it on your phone, next to you, on your computer, whatever, or you can import it straight into your canvas, which is what I'm going to do. So if you're working in Procreate, the way to do that is just going in the wrench icon menu here at the top. In the add a sub menu, selecting insert a photo. And the goal here for the picture is not to be pretty, it's much more to make sure you can use it as a reference for the colors as well as maybe your hairstyle. Just go ahead and make sure that it's not too much in the way if you import it in your image. So I'm just going to crop it and then put it to the side. So once you have your reference picture, we're going to start with a super rough sketch just to map out the basic proportions of the head. And if you're not in the mood for sketching today, no worries, you can go ahead and in the description below you're going to find a link to download a template. It is completely free, it comes with my Procreate Jumpstart Kit, which is essentially a huge bundle of freebies. So you have uh, brushes, you have other templates, you have colored palettes, you have cheat sheets, really a whole lot of things, and it's all free. So again, you can find the link in the description below, or you can head straight to jumpstartprocreate.com to download your freebies. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. So if you're working digitally, go ahead and create a new layer and rename this new layer to sketch. If you're working with pencil and paper, at this stage, just press very lightly with your pencil on the paper. And just like I mentioned earlier, this video is not about any specific feature. Um, so it's not about any specific brush either, but I will try my best to recommend a few different options that you can use, both free brushes that come with Procreate, some alternatives that you can use if you're working in a different software, as well as brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. Now these brushes are not essential, you can totally follow along with free brushes, but they're the brushes I made and I use every single time I'm working on the children's book, so if you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below, and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. Now we're not going to see the sketch in the final result, so it's more about just picking a brush that you know you're comfortable with. If you're not exactly sure, a few different options you could go with in terms of free brushes that come with Procreate. In the sketching pack, the HB pencil could work really well. If you're working in a different software, just try to find something that has pencil on the name. And if you do have my illustration bundle, you could go ahead and pick the sketching brush. So we're just going to start by mapping out a loose circle for the head. And we're going to draw a vertical line to divide that circle in two halves. Now just like you would do if you were to draw a realistic portrait, we're going to try and divide the circle in three roughly equal sections. And just so the video is a little bit easier to follow, go ahead and label these sections as one for the top, two for the middle, and three for the bottom. Now we're going to use the height of one of those sections, we're going to put that towards the bottom and that's going to help us place the chin. So from there you can just mark your chin line and then connect that with the circle to create the shape of the head. And one thing about Disney characters, at least female characters, for males not so much the case, but female characters tend to have a really soft pointy chin, while male characters would have a bit more of a boxy chin. So feel free to experiment with that shape here, the shape of the jaw, to customize and personalize your character. So from there we're going to divide the section 3 in two halves as well. And we're going to use that to draw the eyes. Now the eyes are going to be in this top section of section 3, and they're going to be really, really big. I like to start by just mapping out roughly where they fall in the middle, so kind of like this. And usually if you were to draw a realistic portrait, you know, the eye width would be a fifth of the width of the head. For Disney characters, it's really not that. The eyes go almost to the edge of the face. So you can go ahead and draw kind of the flip version of that curve almost at the side of the head. 
And then you can just connect the two lines to create the eye shape itself. The irises are going to be really quite big and they're going to touch the top lid and otherwise be a little bit more towards the middle of the face than the outside. Pupil, and then you can draw the pupil, which is going to be just below the top lid. Great, so from there we can draw the nose, and the nose is going to align with the bottom of your section 3. Now Disney characters, unless their nose is a featured characteristic, which often happens with male characters or older characters, but if you're working with more of a young, especially a woman character, it's going to have a pretty small nose. And to draw that nose, we're just going to draw three small circles, so a slightly bigger one like this and then two smaller ones towards the edges, and those are going to align with the inner corners of the eyes. Now we're going to divide the bottom chin section in two as well, and this is going to be where we place the mouth, so roughly two sections. And for the mouth for now, you can just go ahead and draw some sort of an oval. We're also going to divide section two in two halves, to place the eyebrows and the inner corner of the eyebrow is going to align with the inner corner of the eye so you can just quickly map that out and the end of the eyebrow is going to be a little bit further out than the corner or the outer corner of the eye and as long as you stick within those lines you can draw really any kind of eyebrow you want and i just realized i hid my reference picture so i'm going to bring it back and use it to help me draw my eyebrows so my eyebrows are pretty straight and then they kind of curve a little bit. Nothing fancy. Kind of like that. And if your sketch is looking creepy, that is totally okay. In the next stage, we're going to create the line art and we're going to refine all the lines as well. So now really the goal is just to focus on the proportions. So trust the process, stick with me, and we're going to make it look good in just a few minutes. But before that, we do have a few elements that we need to map out, starting with the ears. So the ears are going to be filling up the space number three. And I don't know about you, but I find that whenever I draw ears, it helps me see my jaw better. So if when you draw the ears, you feel the need to just change the shape of the head a little bit, by all means, please go ahead and take a few seconds to do that. We're also going to draw the neck, which in case of Disney characters is really quite thin and long. So you can kind of line it roughly with the middle of the eyes. And then you bring it down and curve it away. And last but not least, we're going to add some hair to our character or just roughly mapping it out at least. So if like me, you don't have enough space, don't hesitate to use an arrow tool or anything that allows you to move your sketch around and reposition it as needed. And here this is where your reference picture is really important. You want to look at how your hair kind of falls and just mimic that. Now Disney characters, at least the old school one, like the original ones from the 2D movies, the hair was quite bulky. It was not defined as individual hair strand. It looked more like, you know, the plastic Lego hair. So that means it's going to be quite, quite a bit easier to draw. The main thing is to figure out how the parting works and how your hair falls around your face. So in my picture here, my parting is slightly to the side and you're going to start your hair somewhere around, you know, the bottom of section one. So somewhere around here. And Disney characters, I'm going to show you an example before drawing my hair. Disney characters tend to have kind of the money piece in the front be really thick and kind of away from the head. So that would look, let's say I have a middle part. It would really go away from the head and you actually kind of see that part of the forehead behind the hair and then it would look kind of like this. So without doing exactly that because you need to adapt the hairstyle to you, try and keep in mind that Disney old characters at least, old school characters, you could kind of see the hair wrap around the skull and it almost looked like thick plastic, almost like a helmet. So just remember that and then figure out how you can showcase really roughly your hairstyle. So again, in my case, my parting is right here. I'm going to exaggerate the curvature of the front piece. 
thicken it up. Do the same thing on the other side. And then from there, I'm just going to keep adding pieces, this time with a bit more movement because my hair is kind of wavy. So again, just a bunch of thick plasticky pieces to help you show your general kind of hair. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this found the video, please go ahead and leave me a comment telling me which one is your favorite Disney character. I think mine is probably Belle, you know, from the original movie because she's from France. I'm from Quebec, which is the French part of Canada. Um, I like that she reads books. I, I, I just really like that movie in general, so I would go with Belle, but let me know which one is your favorite. And if you're new on the channel, you might be a little bit confused with that secret password thing. Essentially, it's a game that we play here in all my illustration videos. I hide a secret password for you to find, and it does a few things. It's first of all fun because you know me, you know, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you are and whenever you leave a comment, no matter what the comment is, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes your face, and it is just so truly great to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel. Reason number two is that the secret password does give me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better and that helps me create better tutorials for you, which is super important. So just go ahead and leave me a comment with your favorite Disney character and then we're going to keep going. Now, right before we move on to creating a clean, nice version of our sketch, which is actually going to be the line art, it might be helpful to just flip the sketch to see if everything we've drawn looks right. So if you're working in a digital art software using any kind of mirroring option you have in Procreate, you can just use the arrow tool right here and selecting flip horizontal. And when you do that, it should look all crooked. That is totally normal. We went kind of quickly. So that's why we want to just double check our sketch before we go ahead with the proper lines. So feel free to do any kind of modification. You can distort it if you want. You can just erase and redraw some sections. But the goal here is so that we can use the error tool, flip horizontally, and both sides look equally as good. So feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need to rework your rough sketch. And once you're happy with the structure, we're going to meet in the next step, which is going to be creating the line art. Great, so once you're happy with your rough sketch, go ahead and lower the opacity of that layer until you can just barely see your sketch. I'm going to keep mine a little bit more opaque so you can see it well in the video, but in your case, lower it just before it completely disappears. And then go ahead and create a new layer above the sketch and rename it to line art. And if you're working with free Procreate brushes or a different software, just stick with the pencil brush you've been using. But if you do have my illustration bundle, we're going to switch from the sketching pencil to the outlines brush. And here you might want to go ahead and work with a pure black. Now here, if you're working with traditional pencil and paper, you can start pressing harder or using something like a pen instead of pencil and then erasing the pencil lines behind your pen. This next step is going to be pretty easy because we already have all the proportions in the rough sketch, which means we're just going to be tracing over all the different elements to create a nicer, cleaner character. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this, but I do want to give you some tips, especially for the nose and the mouth. So starting with the nose, here you want to keep it as simple as possible. So you can just draw some thin lines for the nostrils. And then just refine the edges of the nose. Draw a tiny curve for the bottom. And if you want to make it extra cute and extra Disney, you can also draw a tiny curve at the top of your circle to make it look like the nose is this kind of trumpety, pointy nose. My nose is absolutely not like that, but I'm going to lean into the Disney style anyway and pretend I have this kind of pointy nose. Now the other element we haven't really mapped out is the mouth. So for the mouth, we're just going to start by drawing the corners, which you can map out slightly outside of your oval. And then we're going to connect them with a either a V shape or a U shape, depending on the character. Now, if you're drawing a masculine character, most Disney masculine characters only have the slit of the mouth. They don't really have the lips. So if you're drawing a male character, you would just kind of refine that little line and make it look a little bit better. But if you're drawing a female character, you could go ahead and thicken the lips. So starting with just inside the corners of the mouth, you could draw the bottom lip. And then you can draw the top lip as well, just making sure you had a bit of a, like a dimple for the cupid's bow.
And the rest is pretty simple. All you have to do is just go over all the different lines that you sketched and then pick one and trace that one to be part of your line art. So feel free to pause the video here if you want to do this on your own and then we can meet up in the next step which is going to be adding the colors. Or otherwise, if you want to draw along with me, I'm going to keep my video going so you can use it as a reference, but I'm going to speed it up a little bit just so you can kind of see what I'm doing in a bit more of a broader way. Great, so at this point, feel free to hide your sketch, we won't need it anymore. And from there, we're just going to color block the colors on separate layers. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors I will be using, I included my color palette. You can see it's pretty simple, but it will be linked in the description below. It is totally free, so feel free to pause the video if you want to go ahead and download it. But since you're drawing yourself, I recommend just color picking colors from your picture. Now you're going to notice if you're just color picking from the picture as it is, the color is going to change a lot even just within, for example, the skin because of texture, light, and other things. So to make it a little bit easier on yourself, what you can do is just select your reference picture layer and then using any kind of blurring tool you have available to you in Procreate, I recommend using in the adjustment panel the Gaussian Blur tool. And then just by adding a bit of blur to your image, you're going to notice that it's much easier to color pick the color. You can kind of go around and the color changes way less than it did before. So start by color picking the skin. In my case, again, I'm using my color palette, so I'm going to use this color right here for my skin. And we're going to create a new layer, making sure it is below the line art. And we are going to rename it to skin. And here for color blocking, you can really use any brush of your choice. Honestly, I would recommend just the most basic round brush you have in your software. So in Procreate, that could mean in the airbrushing pack, the hard brush. Or if you do have my illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the base round brush. And here, all you're going to do is you're going to outline the skin to then fill it in and create the color blocking. So we're just going to repeat this for all the different colors and all the different elements we have. Next, moving on to the hair. So create a new layer, rename it to hair, and this one we're going to put it below the skin. So once more here, you can either color pick the color of your hair from the picture, 
In my case, I'm going to just stick with my color palette so that if you want to use it, it is coherent. So I'm going to use this brown right here. And since we put the hair layer below the skin layer, all we have to do here for the hair is just draw the general shape of the hair. We don't have to outline the skin and then fill that in and the skin is going to be in front anyway. Now moving on, we're going to draw the eyes. Those you can put above or below the skin, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to go above. So just a new layer, I'm naming it to eyes. In here you can pick a slightly off white in the color palette. I'm going with this one right here. But just make sure it's not pure white so that later you can come in and add the highlight and have that be the whitest thing in your piece. Next we're going to draw the iris, so just a new layer, this time make sure it is above the eyes, rename it to iris, and then here it's probably going to be too small in your picture so you won't be able to color pick, but that's kind of a good thing anyway because since we're drawing a cartoon, especially Disney, we want to make sure that we kind of cheat a little bit on the eye color to make it more vibrant. So in my case I have green eyes, but if I was to color pick it would probably look kind of a brownish um, green, probably like this, but again, it's a cartoon, it's Disney, so just go with what your eye color is, like the name of the color, and then pick it and make it super vibrant. So mine is green, so I'm going to go with this bright green right here. And then we're going to draw the highlight. Now the highlight, you might want to put it above the line art so that you can just draw over uh, the pupil itself. So just create a new layer, rename it to highlight. Then pick pure white and then just draw two pure white circles. Once you're done with the eyes, go ahead and create a new layer, this time below the eyes but above the skin, and rename it to lips. So just like for the eyes, it's going to be really hard to color pick the lips, but that's a good thing too. What I recommend doing instead of color picking for the lips is just going over your skin color, and then from that skin color, adding more saturation, make it a little bit darker, and then move it towards red until you find something that you like. And if you mapped out a shirt, now's a good time to color block it as well. So just creating a new layer below the skin but above the hair, renaming it to shirt, and picking any color of your choice. I'm going to go with a charcoal, so in the color palette, this one right here. And then same thing, you just outline your shape and fill it in. And at this stage, if you're ready to move on to shading, feel free to just skip ahead in the video to the next chapter. Otherwise, I'm going to give you some tricks to just amp it up a little bit and bring this whole piece to the next level. So we're going to refine the hair color, we're going to refine the lips, and we're going to add a bit of a cheek action. So we're going to all create a new layer above the skin below the lips. And we're going to rename this layer to cheeks. And for the cheeks, just go ahead and select the color you use for the lips and switch from a hard round brush to a soft round brush. So if you're working in Procreate, still in the airbrushing pack, but this time the soft brush instead of the hard brush, 
making sure that you bring the opacity back up to 100% if you watch my watercolor videos. If you're working in a different software, just increase the feathering of your round brush and that should work totally fine. And if you do have my illustration bundle, you could pick the um, basic texture brush here to just amp it up a little bit. And from there, you can draw some round cheeks that connect the bottom of the eye to the edge of the face. And if you feel like the cheeks are a little bit too intense, it's not a problem. All you have to do is just lower the opacity a little bit so they are not as strong. Probably gonna set mine around, let's go with 70%. Now we're also going to refine the lips by adding a traditional Disney highlight on the bottom lip. So going back on your lips layer and going back in with a lighter version of your lip color, so quite a bit lighter. You're just going to draw an oval on the bottom lip on the same side where your highlight is in the eye. So in my case, the highlight is on the left. We're also going to refine the hair color because right now it's quite flat. Now this is not necessarily a Disney thing, but I do think it helps bring your hair to life. And it's super simple, so might as well do it. Essentially, we're just going to create a gradient that starts from the bottom of the hair towards roughly the ears, making the bottom part a little bit lighter. So go ahead and select your hair layer. And using any selection tool available in your software in Procreate, I'm just going to use this one right here. You're going to draw a selection towards the bottom section of your hair. And then you're going to feather your selection, so feather here until the top of your dotted line reaches roughly around your ear. It might be a bit hard to see on the screen right now, so you're gonna have to trust me on that one. And then with that selection activated, with the feathering activated, you're going to use any kind of color adjustment tool you have in your software. So in Procreate once more, I'm gonna go in the adjustment panel here at the top. I'm going to select hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'm going to increase the brightness to lighten up the bottom of the hair. Now doing that might make the hair look a little bit gray, so you might need to amp up the saturation as well. But as you can see, it just takes a few seconds, but already the hair feels so much more alive. And if you're not able to follow these steps in your software for one reason or another, it's really not a big deal. All you have to do is color pick the base color you use for your hair, manually make it lighter, and then just like we did for the cheeks, kind of brush it over the bottom part of the hair. That's it. And one last little thing we might want to do before adding the shadows, this one is definitely optional, but it can help soften the piece a little bit, is recolor the line art so it's not all just black. So for that, I recommend going back on your line art layer and activating what is called alpha lock. So if you're working in Procreate, you can do that by swiping your layer towards the right with two fingers, or you can just tap on the layer and selecting alpha lock in the menu. And with alpha lock activated, now everything we draw on this layer is going to stay within the line art that was already there, which means we can just really roughly brush over the lines to recolor them. If you don't have alpha lock in your software, it's really not a big deal. You're just going to have to be a little bit more precise and actually draw over your lines or just skip the step altogether and go straight to shading. Otherwise, what we're going to do here is we're just going to color pick the different colors we have in the different areas make them slightly darker, and then just brush over to recolor those outlines. And you can do that pretty much anywhere you want, but I would recommend not doing it on the eyes. Usually Disney eyes are pretty well defined, so I recommend just leaving your line art black there. So take all the time you need to add any other detail you might want to your piece if you want to add, I don't know, like freckles or jewelry, whatever you want. And once you're happy with your colors, we're going to meet up in the next step, which is going to be adding the shadows. So classic Disney 2D characters usually had pretty simple shading, so we're going to keep it simple here as well. We're going to start by just creating a new layer right below the line art and above any kind of color blocking we have. And we're going to rename this layer to Shadows. 
Now here you could go ahead and color pick all the different colors you have and then make them slightly darker and just use that to paint your shadows. That could totally work. Or if you want to be a little bit quicker, you could go ahead and use what is called a blending mode, which in Procreate you can access if you tap on the little N next to the check mark, it's going to open up the list of blending modes. Most software do have blending modes and usually they are located with the opacity of your layer. So if you cannot find it, just go ahead and Google it and you should get the answer pretty quickly. And we're going to use either multiply or linear burn. They're both going to work perfectly fine for this. And we're also going to load the opacity quite a lot, probably around, uh, I don't know, let's go with 30% for now, but we can come back and play with it as needed. From there, you can pick really any color you want for your shadows. I would just recommend avoiding going with a neutral gray because that would make your shadows quite muddy. So anything that has a bit of a tint to it would work. I'm going to go with this kind of bluish gray here on the color palette. And in terms of brush here, we're just going to stick to the one we used to add the cheeks. So either a soft round brush, if you're working in a different software, if you're working in Procreate, um, it was in the airbrushing pack, the soft brush. And if you have my illustration bundle, we've been using the basic texture, just a little reminder. And again, we're going to keep it really simple for the shadows. So we're just going to add one below the face on the neck. And then we're just going to loosely shade the opposite side of the face from where the highlights are in the eyes and the lips. So my highlights are on the left, so I'm just going to loosely shade the right side. If you do have kind of a forehead shape, the classic forehead hair Disney shape thing, whatever, <laughs> you might want to shade that as well because the hair would be casting a shadow on the forehead. And you can also shade your hair, so just the same side where your face shadow is, just kind of shading the hair as well. And once you've mapped out your shadows, don't hesitate to go back and play with the opacity to have as much or as little contrast as you want. I'm probably going to set mine around 25%. And the very last thing we have to do is add a background if you want. And just so our file is a bit more organized, you might want to group all of your characters layer before importing your background. So if you're working in Procreate, all you have to do is swipe your layers towards the right with one finger to select them. And then just tap on group to create a group that you can then collapse and rename to character. By now you can also hide your reference picture by the way, because we don't want it in the final result. And here in terms of background, you have a few different options. You could just set it to a plain color, that could work. You could draw your own background. I have a view background tutorials. I will link those in the description below if you want to check them out. Or you could import a background or even a picture that you like and that you already have and use that as your background here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to go again in my wrench icon menu here and the add some menu. I'm going to select insert a photo. And I'm just going to use my valley background from a couple tutorials ago and pretty much call it a day. If you enjoyed this video and want more cartoon tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more videos for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.